BJ Miller. I'm a I'm a palliative care doc and educator when I was a sophomore in Princeton University. So it's fall of sophomore year, November 27th, 1990. Um, my buddies and I, we had just gotten back from Thanksgiving holiday. We were walking to the Wawa market late at night. So there's the dinky, this little train that sits right on the edge of campus. It was just sitting there parked. You know, it wasn't, it was just after hours. We didn't think anything of it. This train was powered overhead, electrical and the train had not been turned off. So when we climbed up on top of the train, just there's a ladder. He just climbed it like you'd climb a tree. And then when I stood up, I, I had a, a metal watch on my left arm, on my left wrist, and the electricity arc to that, to the metal, to the watch. And that was that. That was the big explosion. And there's 11,000 volts in this case. And Electricity, you can't see it, can't smell it. It's a practically immediate and it, it enters your body and then courses around and tries to find a way out, essentially. It tends to ground down, which it did in my case. There's, I have a big burn on my chest where electricity, or at least some of it, tried to escape. But most of it went down. And then as, as your leg narrows, it slows the current. So as the current slows, then you really, the tissue can't handle it and it starts to incinerate from the inside out. So it's a particularly painful, brutal kind of injury in a way. It was touch and go for a couple of weeks, you know, probably not out of the woods until maybe third or fourth or fifth week, really. So very close to death. I ended up losing my left arm below the elbow. Um, I lost the muscles in that arm. To, to infection, um, and I lost both legs below the knee, rolled out of that hospital, newly disabled. Uh, and, and then that kicked off a, a really, what for me was a very profound process, a healing process, torturous road in some ways, but a powerful one from which I've gained so much. I had so much support. So I had all this support from friends and parents. I got amazing medical care. So I must say a big answer to this question is with a lot of help. And my parents, not just two people who loved me and were supportive, but my mom had grown up with disability. She had polio and then post-polio syndrome. And so I grew up being very close to a mother who was herself disabled. And that, as you can imagine, really helped me. I had a running start as I entered the, the world of disability. I was already in that world in a way. So that smoothed and eased my transition. I knew from my mom's example that my life wasn't over just because I couldn't do this or that anymore. I knew that just because I was a disabled person now, I was still a person, period, end of story. And that what happened to me, what I, what I did, it was a variation on a theme that every human being who has ever lived goes to, which is you bump up against things that you wish were otherwise, that you wish you could change, but you just can't. And that, that's, that lesson's delivered to us big and small. So that allowed me to see my experience not as this one-off or as this detour from life, but as life. Independence is a myth that we human beings need each other in big and small ways all the time. I don't care who you are. And that, and once you realize that, then this whole notion of disability is tempered. You know, I didn't leave the world of the able body to go to the poor disabled world. I didn't go to the world. I didn't leave the independent world to go to the dependent world. Truth is we're all on that spectrum all the time. One of the things you'll discover is how much of our pain comes from our resistance, not from the event itself, but our resistance to an event or resistance to a change. Um, but finding, if you can, find your way to, to riding these changes, not fighting them. Um, that seems to be really essential, at least in my worldview. And part of that statement also is, it's okay to be changed. You need to give yourself permission because otherwise like our current social set of self, you might sound like, otherwise you might feel like you're giving in or you're weak to be moved, you know, or somehow you're weak to be vulnerable. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. To be vulnerable is natural, is essential, is important, is the thing that links us, is in a sense to be celebrated. 
not to be resisted or ignored or denied. This way you'll find yourself through these experiences. Not only will you get through them, but your life will actually be enriched by them and not in some pat way, but in some deep, visceral, thorough way. And this is how you'll find yourself to a very rich and full life. <laughs>